All right, in part two of completing the square, we're now going to look at what happens when your standard form of your parabola has a y value at the front where it's not 1 anymore. Okay, well, that cranks, crank it, cranks it up just a little bit. Okay, the process is still kind of the same, but let's remember, you know, what a, a perfect square trinomial, or sorry, what the vertex form kind of looks like. So I'm just going to do an example of vertex form. So it's like y equals, usually there's some number like 3, let's say, in front. And then it's like x minus 5 squared plus 12. Okay. If we take a look, we notice that there's a number sometimes in front of the brackets. But in vertex form, there's never a number in there. In other words, it's always just x. So um, if there's a number in front here, 3, like in, in example 1, uh, that's kind of, we got to get that out of there, okay? So it's just a little extra step that we're going to have to do. So we're going to start off as we always did before by taking the first couple terms as the first two terms of what our perfect square trinomial is going to be, and we're going to move the last number over a little bit to make some space. Okay, so this time, before we complete the square, what we're going to do is Okay, I'm going to put brackets around what, what my perfect square is going to be. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a 3 out of just the first two terms. So it's going to look like this. So if I factor the common factor of 3 out of those terms, I'm going to be left with x squared. And 42 divided by 3 is 14. Uh, yep, 14x plus 142. So notice... 142 at the end there. I'm going to write a little more nicely. That wasn't part of the, we didn't take a 3 out of that. We just sort of put it over to the side for a little bit and just kind of put brackets around the two terms and factored only the 3 out of them. Okay? So we had no choice as well as whatever is in front of the x squared, no matter how ugly it is, we got to factor that out. So we factored the 3 out. Okay. So now, this is what our perfect square trinomial is going to be. So we know it's going to be plus something. Okay? So I'll fix my room up a little bit here. All right. It's going to be plus something. All right. So let's go through the process. We're going to take that middle coefficient. We're going to take half of negative 14 is negative 7. Okay? So negative 7 squared always gives us the last term. So we now know that it's plus 7. Uh, nope. Uh, sorry. We're, we had to square that. I forgot about that. So negative 7 times negative 7 is 49. So we have to add that and then subtract it right next to it. Okay. So that's our first step. We're almost com we completed the square. We're almost ready to write that perfect square trinomial as, you know, a binomial being squared. But there's that negative 49 hanging around there at the end that we don't want. Okay? So what we're going to have to do is we're going to bring that out of, of the brackets. Okay. So when I'm writing down my steps, I want to make sure that every step that, or every, all the work that I show, there's not kind of any extra unbalanced stuff going on. Okay? In other words, um, the work that I show matters. So here's the, my first three terms, okay, that I've highlighted. All right. As this, I'm going to put the bracket here, okay. As this 49 here, negative 49, as it comes out, okay, we notice that this 3 in front, like, is multiplying all that stuff in the brackets, including the green negative 49. So as we bring it out of the brackets, the negative 49 says, I'm leaving now. Uh, I'll be multiplied by 3 as I go, please. So as we bring it out of the brackets, we have to multiply it by the 3 that it's entitled to be multiplied by. So when we, when we multiply negative 49 by 3, that's negative 147. So on the outside of the brackets, it's negative 147. Okay? So as we come out, we have to remember to do that all the time. All right, so now it's just a matter of cleaning this up and putting it into vertex form. So y is equal to 
3. All right, this is a perfect square trinomial. It's x minus 7 squared. And then we're going to take the last couple of terms there, negative 147 and positive 142, add up to minus 5. Okay, so there's our vertex form of this particular parabola. Remember our vertex is what's being subtracted inside there, so 7, and it's, that, it's what's being added at the end, so that's negative 5. And A is 3, just like it was in the original equation. All right, so let's take a look at some more. Okay, so here we've got a coefficient in front of the x squared. So we're going to go 10x squared minus 100x, leave a big space, plus 243. Okay. We want a perfect square trinomial out of those first two terms, but first we have to extract that 10 out of them. So we're going to divide them each by 10, leaving us with x squared minus 10x. Okay. Plus 243 over at the end. All right, so I've taken the, the 10 out. So now inside here, we can start working on our, on our completing the square. So half of negative 10 is half of negative 10 is negative 5. That's our kind of number that we're always looking for. And then we know that we have to square that to figure out what goes in there. So we're going to go plus. 25, because negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Always plus first, right? Because that's the third term of a perfect square trinomial. And if we add 25, we got to subtract 25 as well. Okay? So inside the brackets, we do our stuff. All right, in the next step, we're going to bring out the negative 25. And remember that on its way out, it deserves to be multiplied by the 10. Okay, because it's in that set of brackets. So y is equal to 10, x squared minus 10x plus 25. On the outside, negative 25 times positive 10 is going to be negative 250 plus 243. Okay. Perfect square trinomial. Then it's 10 times x minus 5 squared. Right? It's that number. Same. And then, uh, last but not least, we're going to add those together. Negative 250 plus 243 is minus 7. So there is our vertex form of the parabola uh, by completing the square. Okay, we're going to do one more, and I think that's probably good for this video. Let's see if we can find one that is not going to be as... Yeah, I think we're going to end up with this one. And then uh, in the next video, look at a negative in front. All right, so in this, this third example, okay, we'll take those, right, and we're going to go y is equal to 8x squared. By the way, um, at this point, if you kind of want to give it a shot, um, try pausing the video and trying things out before uh, you watch it. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with. Then I'm going to factor an 8 out of those first few terms. So that's 8x squared plus 8x space plus 136. Now we're ready to look for our perfect square trinomial by taking half of the middle term, positive 8, so half of that is positive 4, square it. So it's a plus 16, minus 16. In the next step, I know I'm going to have to take out the minus 16, but I'm at, on its way out, it's going to have to times by 8. And that leaves us with y is equal to 8x squared plus 8x plus 16. Okay. The first three terms there that we keep, negative 16 times 8 comes out. And uh, it's a 64, 128. So that's going to be negative 128 plus 136, and cleanup time. So 8, the, those three terms make up the perfect square trinomial of x 
plus 4 squared. And our last two terms combine and add to 8. So there's our vertex form. All right, so in the next video, I'm going to do some more, some examples where there's a negative coefficient in front of the x squared because that cranks it up a little bit. And sometimes, let's see here. These are all kind of fairly decent examples. Anyway, there's a bunch of practice after that. Oh, yeah, where there's fractions. Okay, so, yeah, that's it. Talk to you later. Bye.